You ever have a time when you're looking at all your photos and kind of wonder where you are and it just seems like one big mess of images and you don't know ex exactly what you've worked on, what still needs to be worked on? Well, today we're going to talk about tracking your workflow with Lightroom color labels. And it is really as simple as a traffic light strategy. This is my Lightroom workflow. I actually started this back in Aperture a long time ago. And it's a very simple thing. It uses traffic light colors to help you get an idea of what it is that's really going to be successful for you as a photograph, what you need to reject to get it out of your way. And it, basically, you want to follow a life cycle of your photograph from the time that you import it until the time that you've decided this is a keeper and maybe it's a portfolio piece. So let's start off with the basics. The first thing you want to do is pick the ones that you want to select for review. And you can use the P key and that'll give you a little white flag. We'll show you this in Lightroom a little bit later on. But it's it's very simple. You just kind of go through your images, see which one you want, and hit pick. Don't worry about anything else. It's either I like it, I don't like it, hit pick. The opposite of that is if something is just horrible. Maybe you've shot a photo of your ankle. Maybe it's blurry. For whatever reason, the quality isn't there. My preference is to hit the number six and flag it as red. Now there is an option in Lightroom to use the X key to mark it as rejected, but I'll show you why I like using color labels in red better than the X key. Yellow, number seven, that is work that's in process. In other words, you may be working on a photograph that isn't quite complete yet. You wanna be able to find that quickly and easily. I hit number seven when I start post-processing on it and mark it in yellow. So that way I may have to stop and work on another photo at some point, but the ones that are in yellow, I know, are the ones that I'm working on now. Once everything's completed, number eight, I mark it as green. That makes it easy to find the photos that I've already completed. If I want to share them someplace else, I can quickly do a metadata search or an attribute search and find these photos. I don't have to worry about wading through all the shots that I've made. I just want to see the ones that are done. And of course, finally, number nine, blue. Those are the ones that I mark as a portfolio image. All right, so let's take a look at how this works in practice. Okay, I've got a number of images here from a trip to Cuba a few years ago, and you can see I've got some of them with a little white flag over here. These are the ones that I've chosen as picks. So for example, let's say that I like this photo. I'm going to select the photo. I'm going to hit the letter P, and you'll see the little flag over here immediately turns white. So those are the ones that I can sort later. So if I want to come up here to attribute, and then just choose the ones with a flag, and thus everything, I turn the flag on, and those are only the ones that I've picked. You can do the same thing with color labels over here later on, or with star ratings. Let's go back to that. So everything in there that I, I want to quickly narrow down to just my picks. Now, if I want to turn this pick off, hitting the P key again doesn't do anything. It just keeps flagging this pick. What you need to do then is hit the letter U, and that removes the flag. Basically, unflag. We talked about why I use red for something that I would reject. Let's say this photo over here. If I decided I don't like that one, if I hit the letter X, this is what's built into Lightroom, you'll see it gives you a tiny little black flag with a letter X in it. It doesn't really stand out that well to me. If I hit X again, it still does the same thing as the pick flag. So we've got to hit U to unflag it. Now, if I hit the letter, or excuse me, if I hit the number six, you can see a red border around it. But when I go to my other images, now it really stands out. And this is the reason why I prefer using a color label rather than the flag because I can just look at a glance. This one over here is green. I know that one's already a completed photo. I'm done. This one over here is red. When I get through going through my picks and my red marks for the ones that I don't want, it is very simple. I can just come up to, ooh, didn't mean to do that. I can just come up here to color, search on just the red ones, and then just like I did search with the flags, it's just as easy to search on a color label as it is on a flag or rejected. And I just find it easier to look at on the screen to see what I'm, what is what if I have a color label on there. And let's say that I start working on this photo over here. So I can go ahead and hit the number seven. That turns it yellow. I can hit the D key to go into the develop module. And now I can just go ahead and start working on it. And we're not going to go very far with this. I just want to do a couple of quick things. And let's say that that was all I was going to do. Suddenly that photo is done. Go back to the library. 
And maybe I said, okay, it's not done, but I'm still working on it. I want to take it to Photoshop. I want to do something else with it. I'll leave it as yellow. And then let's click on another photo. You can see that yellow border is very noticeable, very easy to find. When I'm done with a photo, something I like, I've got it in green. I can find those easily. I can search for them very easily over here. And if I've got something that I think, you know what? This should be a portfolio shot. I can just hit the number nine. That turns it blue. And again, it highlights very quickly and easily. It stands out from the other colors or the ones that are not marked with a color. And of course, I can search for that on the color label. Again, just coming up here with blue. And if you want to get royalty, you can go with purple. It doesn't matter. The simple matter is you want to be able to know where your photos are in your workflow. You want to be able to easily spot them when you're looking at all of your photos and you want to be able to search for them very quickly. That's why I like using color labels and it just seems to make my workflow go just a little bit easier. Thanks very much for joining me on this quick little tip. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helps you out. And you can find uh, more information on Lightroom and other resources at williambeam.com. If you like this, please give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see more, I've got a few more videos lined up coming out. Just go ahead and hit the subscribe button and they'll be marked for you. See you again next week.